Okay, so here I am. Now, you'll notice that when I draw myself, I look up and down all the time. I am spending more time looking up at my mirror reflection than I am actually looking at the paper. And this way I'll try to draw what I'm actually seeing instead of imagining it and kind of drawing that. And that really helps with observational drawing. Um, you will notice that as I speed it up, like right here, it's double time. It looks like a little bit weird because I'm looking up and down so fast. <laughs> okay, so I actually do that, just not that fast. Now you notice the shape of my eyes is not a perfect circle. While these eyes might look cool on a cartoon, they look kind of weird in a self-portrait. So try to draw the shape you're actually seeing. The iris is the part of your eye with color. Now, if you can see your entire iris, it makes you look surprised or angry or some kind of craziness. Usually it's covered up by the shape of your eye and everybody's eye shape is just a little different. Look closely at what you're seeing and just draw the shape you see. Same for the nose. While I have nothing against cartoon noses like this, and they're definitely awesome in your art, your nose actually looks more like this. So if you're trying to draw observationally, pay attention to the shape of your nose. And then I'm going to kind of go in there and add some details to my eyes. Now mouths are also really fun to draw. While this line can show a happy face in a cartoon figure, and these can show other emotions, they look a little odd in a self-portrait. Your mouth is more like this. All right, so if you notice at this close-up, um, the top line has a little bit of a curve in it, and the bottom line and the middle line are a little bit more straight. Now I'm gonna mess with the shape of my face because I never seem to get that right the first time. Drawing a human face is actually one of the hardest things that artists do because people are so close to each other in appearance that it's just those tiny little details that make us look like ourselves. So it's actually really hard for me to draw a picture that looks exactly like me. I, I don't ever do that perfectly, but I try to be kind to myself and I say, hey, I'm getting better at this every time I do it, and it's okay if it's not perfect. It was fun, I learned a little bit, and it looks okay. Now, don't try to draw the individual strands of your hair as much as you're just finding the main shapes in your hair and drawing what you see. All right, I've grabbed a Sharpie marker and I'm outlining what I already drew. But if you look, you'll notice that I am still looking at the mirror. And the reason for this is because I can find and correct little mistakes that I've made in the process of outlining the drawing. And sometimes I'll still make a mistake in doing this and that's okay, right? And the reason we're using the Sharpie marker is so that the paint won't cover up all the work you did. For color mixing to match our skin, we can use the tabletop as a palette to mix our colors on. And just kind of look for a color that's close to your skin. My paint is non-toxic, so you may get a little bit on your skin. Now don't do this at home or at your auntie's house without asking them about their paint first to make sure that it is safe. I touched it to my skin to check if it's the same color and it's a little bit too dark. So I'm gonna add a little bit of this color. You could use white too. Um, I'm pretty sure that's too light. So I'm gonna have to add a little bit more color, maybe a little yellow, but careful with the yellow. It's really powerful. So you wanna just add a little bit um, and notice that I am using water between the colors as well as trying to get some of the pigment off my brush so I can do a better job of mixing colors. Uh, this is, it, it's tricky. It doesn't always work right away. So be patient with yourself. Take your time. And if it's not the perfect match to your skin, it's okay. Now, I know green looks like a weird color to add. The reason we add green is because it's a little bit of a complementary or opposite color to the reddish browns that we generally have for our skins because not all of our skins are really reddish brown. So we have to kind of adjust a little bit and green is a great color for doing that. Um, 
So here I'm just kind of playing around until I find the right balance. And here I think I found it. So I'm going to begin to paint my face. I have a fair amount of water in my brush right now. So it paints over it almost like a watercolor. This is a really good way to do it so you don't lose some of the detail. And notice how carefully I'm painting. Even though I don't have a tiny brush, I'm still able to go around my eyes and my mouth so I'm just coloring just my skin here and I didn't have enough paint so I'm making another batch here now um, when you're using the table as a palette also uh, you might want to clean up with the mop uh, before the end of this period and you want to make sure you're not mixing your colors in another student's space I love for you to be able to use the table as your palette, but it just means that you might have to clean up a little bit more than you usually would. Uh, when I have an art project going on at home and I'm painting for four or five hours, I'll often clean up several times in that, maybe six or seven times if it's really messy, uh, more than once an hour in order to make sure it is not piling up and that I can use all my materials. And please use your judgment. You don't want to have a really crazy amount of paint on the table. It's harder to mix. All right, here I've put a little bit of a darker color on my brush and I'm looking closely at my face to see if I can find darker areas like a, a little bit on my neck is much darker, under my nose, my nostrils, like kind of under my eyebrows and my chin there i'm finding lots of little darker areas those are just the shadows where the light is not hitting quite as much and using a uh, dark color here to show that makes it look more three-dimensional shows the form so here i'm trying to match the color of my lips <laughs> and uh, there you go so still there's a lot of brown in there it's not a red color it's a reddish brownish right so i just mixed it in with my brown because your lips are not bright bright red unless you're wearing lipstick now I'm going to try to match my eyes. I had to actually go and grab some blue from because there's a little bit, my eyes are a little gray, so I still have to mix them. There's a lot of brown in there as well. Um, and then looking at the mirror closely to try to find the right color. Okay, once you get the color on, um, there's usually a reflective part of your eye, so I'm going to grab a little tiny bit of white and just do a little dab where I see the reflection on my eye. And that'll make it look really three-dimensional. And here I'm trying to match the color of my hair. While this is a lovely color, most of us don't have yellow hair. We have some uh, sort of brownish color generally, brownish or brownish blackish. Uh, so you can see that actually the color I've chosen, which is one of the colors directly out of the ice cube tray actually, ended up being pretty close to my hair, is really close to the color of my skin. Um, and that's okay because we're going to go back and add the dark areas, the shadow areas in there if you wanted to try it. Or you could just leave it as it is like this too, okay? Okay, um, now I'm going to mix a little bit of the darker color of my hair, so uh, add a little tiny bit of black. Black is a really powerful color, so you usually don't need very much. And I'm looking closely at my reflection in the mirror so I can find the shapes, the organic shapes of the shadows in my hair. See how I'm doing whole sort of sections in there? I'm noticing the shapes I see and trying to draw those, or paint those, sorry, in my hair. All right, so I'm painting my clothes and you can paint these any color you want. You don't have to paint the color you're wearing. Background, similarly, you can fill it with things that are interesting to you. Like if you like soccer, you could fill it with a soccer field full of kids playing. I'm doing mine with mixing colors kind of roughly on the page because I think that looks pretty cool. But I think do something that says something about you, okay? And remember, be nice to yourself if it doesn't look like you or if the eyes are all askew. That's part of learning, right? All right, I'm going to try to help some students with matching their skin color. That is way too red. And I'm, I can touch this to her skin because my paint at our studio is safe for us. It's non-toxic. But always ask if it's not paint at school to make sure you're being careful, okay? 
just keep on mixing a little bit of colors into it to get the right one. Remember the green kind of makes it more neutral. And the yellow is really powerful. Just add a little bit when you want to do that one. And don't have a ton of paint on your table because then you just end up throwing away a lot, right? Now I'm mixing for another student's skin color. His is a little bit darker, so I found this, but that's way too reddish. It's much not a very natural looking color. So I'm going to use a little bit of green to make it more natural. See how that kind of tones it down and makes it more neutral? Uh, let's see, not quite right, still a little too dark, so we need to add a little bit of a lighter color. Wash my brush first. Now, I think I put a little too much in. This happens, it's okay. I just go back and add some of the other colors you had in there, uh, and then you can kind of correct it. It definitely needs a little bit more green to make it more neutral, it's a much more natural color. You see with experimenting, you can get pretty close to the right color. Here I am, drawing observationally really, really fast. <laughs> it's 20 times as fast as I was doing it. Just looking to add those details. Um, you know, if you don't love the first one, you can redo it. That's all right. Do another one. Do five if you want.